Hi, I'm John Kinderbog, Principal Analyst with Forrester Research, and I'm here to talk to you today about an important new concept in information security called Zero Trust. At Forrester, we spent a lot of time looking at what are the root causes of a lot of these security problems that we've had, and it comes down to a broken trust model. That trust model we know as trust but verify. Today, we've taken it as a mantra or a trust model in the world of information security. And so what has happened is we've trusted users and we've created concepts like trusted users and trusted networks and trusted interfaces, but we actually don't do any of the verification because those people, that traffic is trusted. The fundamental problem in all of information security is a broken trust model. Zero trust is a simple concept, and we eliminate the concept of trust within the network. We say there's no more trusted interfaces, no more trusted users, no more trusted packets, no more trusted applications. And this is an important concept because trust isn't something we need in order to move packets from one place to another. By eliminating the concept of trust, we can simplify how we do network security and we can do some really radical and important and effective things. So Zero Trust has three main concepts. First, all resources must be accessed in a secure manner regardless of location. This is important in a world where mobility is more and more dominant, where we have tablet computers, where we have smartphones, we have laptop users, we have road warriors, we have home workers. They need to be able to access resources and data securely. Second, we need to enforce access control in a granular manner on our networks. If you look at the Bradley Manning attack, the WikiLeaks attack, that's an access control attack. It happened because there was poor access control. And then finally, we have to inspect and log all traffic on our network, not just on our perimeter. You see, once an attacker bypasses our perimeter, they become a trusted user in the old network model, and therefore they're allowed to do whatever they want to do on that trusted network. By adopting the concepts of zero trust and inspecting and logging all traffic, we can see that malicious traffic before it can be devastating to our business. So if you look at the old hierarchical network where we had multiple layers uh, of switching infrastructure laid out in a pyramid style, we found that that was very, very hard to secure. And we ended up having to place lots and lots of different security controls everywhere, and it became unmanageable and ineffective. At Forrester, we deconstructed the traditional network and realized there were a lot of things that we needed to do to a packet to make sure that it was delivered securely. And so we realized that we can't eliminate these, these features and this functionality, but we can aggregate it. And so in rebuilding the secure network, we thought, what if we can take all of these features and place them in a single uh, box, a single appliance, and have a packet forwarding engine underneath all of that stuff so we can deliver packets securely all over the network in a, in a more simple way. This led to the idea of a segmentation gateway. A segmentation gateway is a gateway that segments a network. It's a simple concept. It has the same functionality that you deploy uh, in a distributed manner today. It has firewalling, IPS, content filtering, access control, cryptographic engines, packet forwarding, all the things that we need to, to do in a modern network, but we can aggregate it in a single appliance today because the hardware capability has increased so much. And so we can take advantage of Moore's law and the computing power that we have today to simplify the way we design networks. At Forrester, when we design a zero trust network, we use a next generation firewall as a segmentation gateway. These are very, very high speed devices that segment the network by default. 
And we do that by deploying, uh, switching across the multiple 10 gig interfaces that exist in these appliances. The most important concept in Zero Trust beyond the segmentation gateway is that we define something called an MCAP. An MCAP takes advantage of the old DMZ types of technologies that we're used to using, but we use it in a little bit different way. We segment off an area of the network and we create smaller micro core switching infrastructures that allow us to parallelize the switch infrastructure and make it more efficient. And then we send a, a particular type of traffic, a particular protocol or a particular type of data to that MCAP and we have a micro perimeter surrounding that data by default. So we have a more efficient switching design. We have a more secure network design by default. And that's what the MCAP does for us. And then by creating a, a centralized management infrastructure, we can get all the benefits of the old hierarchical network in a more secure and easy to deploy network because management becomes the new backplane. So this is zero trust network architecture. It's very modular. We can adapt it. it we can make it grow. It's scale free and it adapts to things like the extended enterprise, the idea of this ubiquitous mobility that's happening today. It can meet the needs of your network today and even more importantly in the future. Zero Trust also is very fabric friendly. In fact, the advent of fabric networks makes it even easier to deploy Zero Trust networks and adopt Zero Trust concepts. We can simply place the segmentation gateway in the center of a fabric and have the fabric send the traffic to the segmentation gateway and segment the fabric network by default. Now zero trust doesn't mean that you're going to have to rip and replace your existing networks. In fact, companies who are doing it today are doing it by augmenting their traditional hierarchical network with a zero trust network. They typically will take a particular type of traffic or a t particular type of data such as, as credit card data and build a zero trust network to meet a particular uh, security objective or compliance initiative and then this allows them to grow their zero trust network over time as their network changes, adapts and, and evolves. So zero trust basically means to verify and never trust anything on your network. You need to inspect and log all your traffic, not just the external traffic, not just the perimeter traffic, but also all the traffic on your internal network. This will allow you to design your network from the inside out instead of the outside in. You can take a particular type of data that can be very impactful to your organization if it's lost or stolen and design your network around that data type. This also allows you to design with compliance in mind so that, so that your network is by default compliant to whatever set of regulations you need to meet. And by doing all of this, you can embed security into the very fabric or DNA of your network. I hope you'll spend some time looking at Zero Trust and reading some of the things we've written and talked about related to Zero Trust. Yes, uh, segmentation gateways, the way we use them when we design Zero Trust networks for our clients, are essentially next generation firewalls. We call it a segmentation gateway because it defines the purpose of it. Uh, it's a gateway designed to segment networks. But if we use the term firewall, we find that people want to push the device to the edge instead of embedded in the center of the network where we think it actually belongs. That old idea of a firewall sandwich really doesn't benefit the enterprise who's deploying it. It benefits the vendors who are selling it. So they can sell multiple firewalls in the same account and uh, get revenue, but what happens is it increases the management burden 
on the security teams. Now they're managing one or two or three different brands of firewalls in multiple places. Complexity is exponential and ultimately it makes people less secure because those configurations get out of control and we know from the research that we've done that a significant amount of network downtime comes from misconfiguration in human error. So by consolidating things into a single box, we can reduce the management burden significantly. We can make the, the deployment uh, more effective and more simple. And quite frankly, as long as we deal with high availability and the issues that we deal with, we're not going to have problems of the network coming down because one device comes down. If you think about that old firewall sandwich, whether it's the internal firewall or the external firewall, if either one of those fails, the network goes down anyway. There was really no benefit to the end user. And it's really a defensive tactic used by vendors to keep products that, that maybe aren't as innovative as they should be uh, still selling to enterprise networks. Zero trust architectures are very virtualization friendly. Within an MCAP, you have a, a large layer two segment, but you have boundaries on that layer two network. So the people who do uh, uh, virtualization are very happy. They have a segment uh, that's layer two that allows them to move virtual hosts around, but it helps us in the security side as well because people can't accidentally move a virtual workload into an area that will throw somebody out of compliance, for example. So you get the best of both worlds with Zero Trust. You get the layer two areas for where you need it and you get the security boundaries that control virtualization so it doesn't get out of hand. The best way to begin creating a Zero Trust network architecture is to look for toxic data that you need to protect and design a small Zero Trust network around that toxic data. Toxic data is data that if it gets beyond your network, if it gets into the wrong hands, you're in trouble. This is typically credit card data, personally identifiable information, healthcare information, or intellectual property. So take this data and build a zero trust network around it, and then you are protecting that particular data type uh, in a way that's, that's much more significant and powerful than you ever have before. And then over time, you can extend your zero trust network to other aspects of the business. But this allows you to get into the zero trust game without completely replacing your entire network. Zero trust is a, is a pretty new concept. And so uh, we've been amazed by how much actual real-world deployment of Zero Trust is happening in the world today. Uh, there's two places where it seems to be resonating right now. The first is in compliance uh, initiatives such as PCI, so we have customers who are building uh, credit card data networks using Zero Trust concepts because it limits the scope of the assessment that they have to do for PCI. That's the first place that we see it being deployed. And the real ROI is in the reduction of cost in their compliance efforts. And the second area is in the world of governments, defense industries, that kind of thing where they have highly proprietary data that they're very, very concerned about. And given the rash of nation state attacks, they need to do something differently because, hey, the stuff they're doing today hasn't been working. So they're deploying zero trust to protect intellectual property or top secret types of, of uh, information and the value to them is they have much more control over that data and they can see and have visibility into who's accessing that data, where it's going and, and what potential attacks might be uh, being attempted against that data. Music